I'm having a hard time falling in love with you because my ex-girlfriend is a 10 on the scale of beauty, and you're not that attractive to me. And I was like, calm down, did you really just say that? So I was like, well, why? What, what's happening? And he said, it's because your face is crooked. And I remember for the first time looking in the mirror and seeing this crooked face. And it was like Anne of Green Gables when she tries to imagine the way her hair color. That's how I felt about my face. Like suddenly, all I can see is this face that isn't good enough. Growing up through high school, I had always felt insecure in different ways, never really liked what I looked like, never felt like I was pretty enough or thin enough or this enough or that enough, but it wasn't just physical, it was in every area. It was like spiritually, mentally, emotionally, academically, physically, everything. I never really felt like I measured up to these standards I set for myself. And so I spent my life standing on tiptoes, trying to be good enough, trying to be someone who was worthy. Uh, but it had never consumed me. I really had a strong walk with God, and I knew a little bit of who I was in Christ. So even though I felt insecure, it, it wasn't like an obsession. Well, this guy tells me, your face is crooked, and I suddenly start to feel like, wow, I really am not good enough. I really don't measure up. Something's missing here. So we keep dating, even though I should have ended it, but um, I... I really wanted a ring on my finger. I thought that that would give me more worth and more value as a human being if I could be married by 20, preferably in China. And um, so I, I kept dating him, and um, he had a certain way he wanted me to look. I, this is weird, but it's true. I had to wear white stockings with skirts or dresses, with my hair washed with Pantene Pro Beach and moon conditioner, and then blow dried, but not straightened. And if I didn't look that way, he'd become upset or just leave. So one night uh, we went, my relatives from Indiana had come into town, so we all went midnight bowling, and sounds like a great thing to do, right? Well, I was smart. I am in college. I realized that if I wear white stockings to a bowling alley for midnight bowling, my legs will blow, I will look like an alien, and that's weird. So I did not wear white stockings. I wore like jeans and a regular shirt. Well, we get back to my parents' house, and um, my boyfriend walks inside and um, picks up his backpack and walks back out the door. And I was like, where are you going? Don't you want to stay? Like, it's still early. My family is all hanging out. You don't want to hang out with us? And he wouldn't look at me. He wouldn't answer. He just kept walking down the long way. So I, I followed him. I used to be a stalker. Not really. Not anymore. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I follow him out the door. And um, he keeps walking toward his car and won't acknowledge me, won't look at me. And finally, he gets to his car. And as he's about to leave, he turns around and looks me up and down and says, you're not giving me any reason to stay. And he left. And I felt like these cold, clammy hands wrapped around me and started squeezing. And I was like, so if I am not perfect, if I don't have it all together all the time, if I'm not beautiful, if I don't look a certain way, if I'm not good enough, then nobody's going to stick around. And that was the beginning of what I call my insatiable quest for beauty. But more than beauty, it was really an insatiable quest to be good enough. What does that even mean? I was doing worship at this church in LA, and the pastor stands up to read my book title, and he's like, The Insip. And he suddenly has no idea what this word is. He's like, I've never heard this word before. The, the quest for beauty. So apparently insatiable is not in our normal vocabulary. So insatiable is something that can never quite be satisfied. It's like chasing the horizon line. You can run as far and as fast as you want to, but it will always elude you. You'll never quite reach it. That's what insatiable is. You can pursue it with everything you are, but it will never satisfy our hearts the way we think it will. It will never make us good enough the way we think it will. And what's a quest? A quest is your holy grail. It's that one thing that you want more than anything else in the world. That you would give anything and everything if you could just grab hold of it and find what you're after. And for what? There are so many different quests. For me, it was beauty. It was looking a certain way, needing a certain image. But there are so many different places we look to to try and satisfy our hearts, to try and make us good enough. There's being athletic enough, being 
musical enough, being talented enough or smart enough, being involved in enough ministry, dating the right people or getting married at the right age or having enough kids or being whatever. And none of those things are wrong. A lot of those are good things. <coughs> but they can never satisfy our hearts. And if we look to them, they'll leave us empty and broken. So I start off with a quest for beauty, and for me, it, it becomes an obsession with the numbers on the scale. There's so many ways um, an obsession with beauty or different things can go, but for me, it became about if I would look a certain way, if I meet a certain image, look like my boyfriend's ex, or look like these girls in the magazines, and um, I, I became consumed with this idea. And I remember just walking into a room and comparing myself with every woman I saw. Like, I wish I had her hair and her eyes and her laugh and her personality and her this. I'm sure you guys do it all the time. Do have love her shirt? It's so great. I wish I had that shirt, you know? Um, but I, I did that all the time. So, maybe with other things. So, um, I, I'm just comparing myself with every woman I meet and feeling so inadequate and just not good enough keenly aware of how not good enough I am, and um, so I just started losing my appetite. I wasn't even trying to lose weight at first. I just became so disgusted with myself that I wasn't hungry, and so I would start, I started losing weight from that, uh, from a normal healthy body weight, and <coughs> then I became addictive, and I was like, this became an obsession, and uh, then I started trying to lose weight, so I would go as long as I could with as little food as I could until I got what I call these sparkling headaches. And it feels like feels like there's like static electricity in your brain and you get really dizzy and then everything goes black. And I would black out driving down the road, walking upstairs almost every day for a long time because I was not getting what my body needed. I of college and my dad finds out some of the stuff that has been going on behind the scenes with my boyfriend. And he is so mad, as you can imagine. Let me back up for a second. I grew up in an incredible family. And you know, sometimes I, I used to think like this kind of struggle wouldn't happen to me because I grew up in such a great family. But I still do it. And I had the most wonderful parents you could ever ask for. My dad, just to give you some background, he was like the kid's pastor at my church growing up. And he's like the nicest person. Who was it who they said that could entertain small children for hours? Jonathan or something? Yeah, that's like my dad. You're like my dad. So, <laughs> I felt like 
helpless, and like I had no control over myself. I was numb. I didn't know if I was hungry or if I wasn't hungry, and it began to consume my life. And when the binge would finally end, I would feel so guilty and so mad at myself, and I'd be like, Tiffany, you've got to get it together. You've got to not eat tomorrow. You have to get this together. And it became this cycle of binging and then not eating, binging and not eating, and it consumed several years of my life. I honestly thought that I could never be free from it. But it wasn't working. I was still gaining weight, and looking back, I was coming back toward a healthy body weight, and it was good, but um, I didn't see myself the way anybody else saw me. The person I saw in the mirror was not the person that anybody else would have seen. And so I was like, you know what? This is my quest, and I will do anything, whatever it takes. And so one night I thought I had the answer. And so I I remember uh, walking into my bathroom.
right where we are, whatever mask we may be hiding behind. And you're waiting to come and rescue us too. And I pray that this week you begin to reveal to us who we are beneath the mask, what you say about us, and your heart toward us. In Jesus' name.